Now, the next domain I want to discuss is maybe a little more obvious. It's about safety. When Formula One started at the um, end of the 50s, um, drivers weren't strapped in, and there wasn't, um, most of the components of the car weren't joined on either. And you could imagine that survival uh, was difficult if you're traveling at 120 miles an hour and fly straight out of the car. Um, nobody had a fireproof suit like this one. Motor racing is fundamentally dangerous. And I think that um, it's really important to realize how much things have gone on. And I wanted to show you uh, a clip from the famous Le Mans race of 1955, which some of you may remember or have seen before, because it was seminal in changing the way um, Formula One and other motor racing uh, behave. I love these early starts. I sort of miss those. Mercedes were fighting it out with Jaguars, Ferraris with Aston Martins, MGs with TR2s, Fangio and Moss, Hawthorne and Castellotti were just some of the household names at the wheel. And they were giving the quarter of a million people in the stands some high-class entertainment. The race was the fastest ever, faster even than the Grand Prix times of the day, 150 miles an hour, touching 180 on some stretches. Then suddenly, disaster. One of the Mercedes had somersaulted a barrier and cut a sway through the crowd at 150 miles an hour. The result, horrific. It took some time for the scale of the disaster to sink in. In the confusion and panic, no one was sure exactly what had happened. In fact, 80 people had died and hundreds more were injured. The Mercedes was made of magnesium alloy, which was itself highly flammable at high temperatures. The effect of that was to make people realize that cars traveling at that speed somehow need not to come into contact with the crowd. Um, we still see that now in rallying from time to time, but Formula One has separated the crowd, separated many of these events um, from the racing itself. It didn't stop fire. These three short clips demonstrate um, some terrible accidents, one for Bandini in Monaco, uh, Williamson, who um, had a terrible crash and had to be uh, an attempted rescue which failed from one of his friends, and Ronnie Peterson, who died at Monza. Fire used to kill drivers, and now it does not, partly because of these suits, partly because the fuel tanks are much safer than they were. And the number of deaths and injuries in Formula One has actually has fallen dramatically. And now um, the number of deaths is very low. There's only been one since 19... 94. The medical facilities in the early days were very poor and haphazard and not consistent. And medicine um, has made a difference to this, uh, to this sport. The last really terrible weekend in Formula One was in Imola in 1994, when Rubens Barrichello flew off the track into railings note but was terribly injured and had to be resuscitated. Ronnie, Roland Ratzenberger died during practice in this accident. And watching on from the pits uh, was Ayrton Senna, who on the Sunday crashed in the same place and died. That weekend had a profound effect on Sid Watkins, who I showed you earlier, who's here trying to treat Roland Ratzenberger, who resuscitated Rubens Barrichello and had to be present when Ayrton Senna died. Ayrton was his very good friend. It gave him an even bigger impetus than before to make Formula One safer. And um, now, as I say, with only one death in the last 20 years um, and many less serious injuries, uh, the impact of Sid Watkins can't be underestimated. Sid's a neurosurgeon who was a petrol head and loved motor racing, 
but he had really good relationships with the drivers and the engineers and suggested many changes to cars which had made them safer. The last accident was Jules Bianchi last year and um, this truck was inside the safety barriers at a time when the race took place and he went straight into the back of it. And the next change in Formula One cars may well be uh, covered cockpits to prevent that kind of accident. Sid Watkins did most of this on his own, but he couldn't have done it without the bit that I want to emphasize, which is that the whole business of Formula One was transformed partly when Sid arrived, but also during that weekend in Imola, where safety became what the organization was about. Safety became the dominant psychological move for the next 20 years.